seated, you certainly can. And we're just believing tonight that God is going to do some absolutely awesome things. Uh, I'm going to uh, give some testimony, and, and that microphone's almost dead as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to give some testimony tonight about general conference and things that are occurring, and then give you a word that I believe I have from God, and then I'm going to hand it over to Pastor Carnahan tonight. And uh, Pastor Carnahan is also going to bring you some testimony and some word tonight. So praise God. We're just going to kind of see where God leads this. And uh, I think I just want to set the platform for Pastor Carnahan to, to launch into what he needs to spiritually tonight. So I am ecstatic and excited about that. I would like to bring out a scripture straight from the beginning here. And that's in Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4. And the scripture um, kind of can set the stage here, but it's going to set the stage for some other scriptures that I'm going to give here in a little bit. Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 4 through 10. Jeremiah chapter 1 and 4, it says this, Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. I'm just a child, God. How can you do these things through me if I'm just a child? But God said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, you shall speak it. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant in Jesus' wonderful name. That scripture right there could be preached on all night long. But the thing that I want to point out here is that Jeremiah, this big prophet, told God, I am just a child, so how can you use me in the kingdom of God? I'm just a child. I'm just a baby. I don't know these things. I don't know what's going on here. So how can I be used in the kingdom of God? And we can look at this in two senses, one of them being a spiritual child, that we just came into the church. We're new to this thing, and we don't quite understand the whole apostolic doctrine and the whole Bible from, from beginning to end or anything like that. And so we feel like children, and rightly so, many of us uh, need to always be in that childlike state because when we step out of that and we begin to think that we're higher than God, then issues can come in. But if we remain in that childlike state, like, God, teach me, God, give me your word, give me that meat and those things that are there, then God can begin to use us in amazing ways. Um, the second way is being a, a physical child. Um, there's teenagers in the room tonight. There's children in the room tonight. And sometimes we can say, I'm just a teenager. How can God use me? I'm just a child. How can God use me in this kingdom? How can God set these things forward? And so what I want to tell you tonight is that it doesn't matter where you think you're at, but God can absolutely use you. God can absolutely use you to do great and mighty things. God can do some powerful things through your life and where you're at in Jesus' name. So don't be intimidated because you are a physically a child or because you're spiritually a child, but we can be children in the kingdom of God. And that's why I want to relay this vision to you because you are a part of this vision, being a part of this church and being a part of these things here. The United Pentecostal Church has a vision that's beginning to grow and it's exciting. I don't know if you remember the very first time when the church was flipped the other way and we were looking at the big screens and we were all super fascinated and, and excited about being able to live stream General Conference. I mean, if you were here in the church at that time, we were ecstatic. We were bouncing off walls because, man, we get live streaming of General Conference here in this place. And now live streaming is able to go forth into thousands of churches every year, which is just absolutely amazing. I remember a few years ago saying it would be cool to see a district youth Facebook page. And God beginning to form that and God beginning to, to allow that to come forth. And now we have a Facebook page for the district youth. Something simple, but it's something that God said, you know, this might be something that you need to do. 
a continuous youth camp occurring every year. These were visions that we had in the district, seeing these things going. Bible studies inside of schools and young people doing great things. These were all things that as a young person, I remember trying to see vision for and trying to see direction. And God has fulfilled those things up to this time. I remember when I was the only student in the youth group and thinking, God, you know, I, I, uh, I wish that we had other students in the youth group. And I'm proud to say that this morning we had 13 people in the youth group. Isn't that absolutely awesome? God is doing some awesome things. Now, I'm not saying that every morning we're going to have 13 people in the youth group. But what I can say is that God is doing some absolutely amazing things. And I want to relay you some of this stuff here. Some of this is business stuff. But business apostolic stuff excites me because God is growing in so many different areas. This comes from the general youth division in our meetings that we had this week. Apostolic Youth Corps, which is mission trips overseas. There were nine of those trips this year. 400 attended these trips, which is a 14% growth from the year before. This next year, we are going to have 13 AYC trips for students to attend. 304 were filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. 15 were baptized. 184 documented healings occurred in these places. There were 508 first-timers and 95,400 invitations passed out in countries around the world. That is Apostolic Youth Corps. And God is doing some great things through that. And I, I want to say that you have a part in that because you gave the Sheaves for Christ. And this year, our Sheaves for Christ offering was the highest in the district, which is an absolutely honor, and it's absolutely awesome. But because of Sheaves for Christ, these things happen. So you are a part of this in the seat you're in. You're a part of the United Pentecostal Church and these things happening. Campus Ministry International is growing. Hyphen groups are growing across the country. The community, which is a website, has over 1,700 resources for youth leaders, and it's growing and launching a brand new website because of this. Youth Congress is growing and now will move to a football stadium, as you all are, are well aware of. Project 7 this year, there's 900 clubs registered in the United States. 200 of those are brand new since Youth Congress. 200 brand new Project 7 high school clubs. It's growing at a rate of six clubs a day since Youth Congress. Six brand new Project 7 clubs are forming a day because of this. There are now 160 lessons available to young people to use in these Bible clubs. Senior Bible quizzing is also growing. This year, 192 teams competed up from 170 last year. That is absolutely amazing. This year, the first ever apostolic daily devotional was wrote for young people. So now they can have a daily devotional. Sheaves for Christ, over $4 million was given to Sheaves for Christ this year, setting a record that has never been set before, which is absolutely awesome and powerful. Over $1 million was able to be provided to missionaries so they could have vehicles to go to different places. We had one missionary come and testify to us that he has to travel through 126 degree weather over a desert in order to baptize people. And so the only way he can baptize people is if he has a vehicle with air conditioning because otherwise it's impossible to travel across that desert. But because he has that vehicle and sheaves for Christ, he is able to travel across that desert and baptize people. This is something that you have a part. You are a part of this. You are a part of these things that are occurring here. So God is doing some awesome things through that. Project 7 is now fully funded because of the Sheaves for Christ giving this year, basically meaning that it has all the resources that it needs at this point. Something that's pretty awesome is that Hillsong is now baptizing in the name of Jesus Christ because they're seeing the potential of what it really truly is here, what Jesus Christ truly is. This is big stuff. These are testimonies that are coming down the line. There, there's so many of these. I wish you could sit in some of these meetings and, and, and hear these testimonies. But I just want to try to relay some of this to you. There's some big-name preachers out there, and I can't list names, but they're over these churches with thousands in them, these, these, these people that have the big houses, the cars and everything that you're always seeing on the media and the news. And I, I'm proud to announce, and I'm proud because I serve a mighty God, and I'm excited for him. That's why I'm saying that. 
But this mighty God that we serve, these preachers are now getting baptized in the name of Jesus behind the scenes because they are realizing what the name of Jesus truly entails. I'm just believing that that's going to begin to expand into something greater and bigger into different places. These are people that you would never thought of. These are people that you see on the internet, their names. If you look at their name and you see it, it's probably that person. But in Jesus' name, God is doing some great things through that. New Beginnings Adoption has adopted 700 children and saved 500 from abortion so far. They have plans. That is awesome. It's the God we serve. They have plans to grow to three to 5,000 adoptions, and they are definitely on the trail to that. So in all these ministries, it was nothing but growth and growth and growth. And that is exciting because as the, the largest apostolic organization in the world, God is doing some amazing things through every one of these people and these churches that are around. The youth day service, I'm a little bit biased here, but the youth day service on Friday was absolutely awesome. The altar call just began to go off. I mean, God did some awesome thing through the young people. And the message in that um, altar call was hearing the beat of God and listening to the beat of God, that sometimes we're walking through this world and people will question us, well, why are you doing that? Why are you involved with this or that? And the reason being is because we march to a different beat than what the world does. We may be in this world, but we march to something that is different than what is in this world. Brother Bernard also spoke Friday night, for those of you that were able to listen to it, about certified miracles. And this is something that I believe is coming to our church here because he spoke about certified miracles and he prophesied that that was going to begin to happen everywhere across the world. And I'm believing that here, that God is going to begin to do some certified miracles because of faithful people that are in this place. And God can certify that miracle tonight. These are miracles that you, don't, you can't question, but you know for a matter of fact that God has done something through that. So with all these things growing, I want to bring you to a scripture because I believe that this is a scripture that shows us why all these things are growing. In Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 and 2, you can find the scripture. So let's turn there and see what the scripture says. This part here, I'm going to take this from a couple different things. And if you're in the youth group, I, some of this stuff you've already heard before. Um, and you, you'll recognize it when I begin to speak it. But Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. I'm just going to read off the screen because I have trouble finding that one-handed in Jesus' name. Colossians chapter 3 and verses 1 and 2. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is sitteth on the right hand of God. Next one, please. Set your affection on the things above and not on the things of this earth. You see, Jesus, when he began to speak about the Holy Ghost and this comforter coming, people did not understand what he was speaking about. And they were questioning, you know, Jesus, what is this thing that's going to come? What is going to come in the book of Acts or later on? And Peter was one of these that questioned, as we found out this morning, he messed up. He did things wrong in his life. But yet, Peter still obeyed Jesus, and he went to that upper room, and he found out what Jesus was talking about when he began to set his eyes on the things that were above and not the physical things that were on this earth. The reason the United Pentecostal Church is seeing so much growth in so many gro growth in all these different areas is because the vision is being set towards the kingdom of God. The vision is not about just making money or looking at one another. The vision is about God and seeing God proclaimed to every single soul that is in this nation, that is upon this earth, and that is in every single city around. Because of that, Paul was able to be transformed because he set his eyes on the things above and not the things on this earth. Noah had his eyes set on fulfilling what God wanted him to do, and because of that, he heard the drumbeat and listened to what God was trying to tell him to do. So, when I was flying, and this is the, the last part that I kind of want to finish up with. When I was flying, I had to fly out of Nashville. I, I was flying back to Gillette here, and I found it quite interesting because on my way there, I flew from Denver straight down to Nashville, which would make sense. But on the way back home, I had to fly down to Dallas 
and then up to Denver, and then up to Gillette. So in a sense, I had to go the completely wrong direction, stop there, turn around, in order to go the complete right direction, in order to make it back to where God wanted me to go. Sometimes, uh, you know, like I, I, I was kind of praying about it, and God kind of opened my eyes to a few things about that. But I kind of titled it Flying South in Order to Fly North. And sometimes we have people asking us, why are you flying that direction? Or why are you going that direction? Why are you climbing that mountain? Or why do you look so different? Or why do you speak different? And why are you doing so much in in these different things? And they can begin to accuse you and say, well, it's easy for you because you're in church. It's easy for you because you had parents that were set in these things and that helped you through these different things. But what I want to tell you is that we have to face a mountain. And this mountain that we have to face is one that Lot faced in the Bible. He was in the valley in a city that was completely sinful, and God called him out of that city in order to climb a mountain. But Lot slowly did this. He wasn't really willing to go right away immediately. And he eventually kind of fought with God a little bit about going out and climbing this mountain in order to get out of this valley where he was at. But we don't need a lot generation, but we need a generation that is a Caleb generation that says, when God calls me to the top of that mountain, I am going to step out and I am going to climb that mountain and I am going to rise above whatever this world has around. We must be willing to equip ourselves for the climb And we must be willing to climb that mountain. That is the vision. If you are part of this vision and becoming part of this, you must equip yourself for the climb out of the valley up this mountain. Because we are all called to stand out. And we were all called to stand out right from the beginning of the Bible. Because God told Adam, hey, you can eat of the rest of these trees, but I don't want you to eat of this tree in the middle. Because this tree in the middle is going to cause you grief. It's the same thing in this world today that God has told us our our boundaries and things that we can do. He has given us scripture about who we are and what we can do. But we have to realize that even though we are in this world, we are not to partake of certain things in this world because we are called to stand out just like Adam was at the very beginning of this Bible. God did not intend for the sin to live inside of Adam, but God intended for Adam to still live in the midst of that garden, in the midst of that sin, and not fall into that sin. Moses lived in Egypt, but he was not truly an Egyptian. He was in Egypt, but he was not an Egyptian. We are in this world, but we are not of this world. We are a city that is on a hill that cannot be hid and not be taken down. The world may ask, how close can you get to the valley and still be in the calling of God? But in reality, it's not about where your feet are. It's about where your eyes are. It's not about where your feet are at. It's where your eyes are at. Lot's wife did not turn into a pillar of salt running away. She looked back. It's where your eyes are. She was running away from where God had called her out of, and she turned her eyes back to the thing that God said, don't turn your eyes back to. It's where your eyes are, and that is where your vision is going to go. Lot's wife had a Snapchat mentality that I will take a 10-second look into the valley, and nobody will know that I took a look back. Nobody will know that I just took this 10 seconds to look back at that valley that God has called me out of. But I want to declare this, to remember Lot's wife when you're out with that other person. Remember Lot's wife when you click on things on the internet. Remember Lot's wife when the credits roll on your screen from a movie that you should have never watched. Because sometimes we ask, if I'm a Christian, then how did I entertain myself with that? But in reality, it's because your feet are in salvation, but your eyes are in a wanderlust for the valley. Where are your eyes are where are your li- eyes looking? You are called to be an apostolic. Your mountain is a very very big deal and it can mean the difference between somebody dying or somebody finding Christ. Your mountain is a big deal. Where are your eyes at? The valley isn't made for you but mountain the mountain is yours. I'll wait till next year to prepare sometimes we say or you know I'll wait until the next month whatever it may be. But there is one mountain, and you are either going up or you're going down on that mountain. So we need to declare 
give me this mountain. I want mountain music. I want less valley and services and more of the mountain and services. I want a mountain mindset and I want to wear mountain clothes. <laughs> Apostolics, it's great if the world admires your mountain clothes, but the reason you wear mountain clothes isn't because they are stylish. It's because you are called to a mountain. You are called to a mountain. Abraham the mountain is a place of sacrifice, but once you get there, you'll realize that God was providing everything you thought that you would lose. You may be scared to let go of the valley, but God has better things on the mountain for every one of us. There are confrontations in the mountain where only preparation through the word of God is going to sustain you. And it was on the mountain that Satan offered the world to Jesus if he would just take one trip to the valley, just one trip. So what did Jesus say back to Satan? He said, it is written. It is written. I march to a different beat. We march to a different beat as the apostolic church. And so when people begin to question these things, we have growth. We have these things that are exciting. And you are all a part of that. And I want to encourage you as being a part of that. And so when people begin to question who you are and what you have done, and they begin to question your lifestyle and, and everything around that, realize that you are marching to a different beat than what is in this world. Realize that God has called you to go up that mountain and to be different from what is inside of this world world here today. And so today I want to encourage every one of you to climb the mountain, to get out of the valley, and to set your vision on the top of that mountain, because the top of that mountain is where we are going, and the top of that mountain is where we are marching to in Jesus' name. So praise God. If we could all just lift our hands and um, just praise God and give him glory, I'm going to turn the service over to Pastor Carnahan in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for what he's doing. Let's praise the Lord for what he's doing. Give God the glory. Let's give God the glory. There's no question about it. God is doing great things. He is doing great things. Oh, hallelujah. What a great vision. What a great direction. What a great hour to be an apostolic. Praise God. We saw many things. We heard many things. There was no question about it. But tonight, if I could describe God in one word, it would be hard. But I, I would choose the word amazing. <laughs> Listen to this tonight and let this inspire you in Jesus' name.
Oh, let's begin to lift him up. Can we, church? Come on, not just a song, but a beautiful, beautiful presentation. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, he is amazing. There's nobody like the Jesus that we serve. Come on, we don't have anything to worry about. We don't have to be ashamed of anything. We can lift our hands. We can praise him. We can glorify him. I believe the Lord is, is just, he's just waiting for these kind of things to happen. In the name of Jesus. Oh. the name of the Lord. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Brother Fitzner. What a beautiful job of casting vision. And that's what's, uh, that's what's happening in Jesus' name. You better beware. They're, um, they're giving us things when we come to these conferences. I, I brought this thing out. This is what the uh, Foreign Missions Department gave each one of us on the general board, and I think you guys got one too, didn't you? Um, that's quite a deal. I, I didn't quite know how to take it when they first gave me these things. And I'm going, my goodness, all I have is carry-on luggage. This is going to work, isn't it? Yeah, I walk into the airport with this thing here, and I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to be on the most 10 most wanted, at, you know, uh, poster, that type of thing. And so thank you, brother, for bringing that home for me. <laughs> you know, he had a check bag. So I just said, why don't you put that in your check bag? And by the way, if he gets into trouble, then I'm not. <laughs> I'm just kidding you. I'm just kidding you. And I um, uh, appreciate Brother brother Fitzner. Him and I, we had good time there, didn't we? It was peaceful, and it was just fulfilling. I mean to tell you, we, uh, and I was glad we was only on the 11th floor. <laughs> Him and I, we, we take it upon ourselves to use the steps. And so I'm glad they didn't put us on the 23rd floor. <laughs> <laughs> that one would have been harder, you know, but we went up and down those steps and we just prayed and, 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 and worshiped and just had a good time. And uh, I tell you, he is a, a great person to travel with. He really is. And so tonight I'm not going to be very long either. I just want to cast a little bit of vision too because I feel like that was one of the things that was accomplished at, our, at, our, at the conference. There's no question about it. Vision was being cast in Jesus' name. And the United Pentecostal Church has... Um, with the help of the Lord or with God, just period, with God, period, has positioned themselves. The organization has positioned itself into a place where there are tremendous doors that are being opened, tremendous doors that are being opened. And um, uh, just a couple of things I'll bring to your attention. One of them was our uh, World Network of Prayer coordinator. Her name is Flo Shaw. I think you've heard me make reference to her from time to time. Very, very godly woman, just in my opinion. I, and I, again, I'm not lifting her up or doing anything like that, but there's no question in my mind that she has been used mightily in the area of prayer. And she is um, one of the um, many um, uh, organizational factors that come in and they give a report to the general board. But without a doubt, every time she walks in there, you can just feel the anointing of the Lord. Brother Bernard said something that I really I just clicked to me. He said, in our Bible colleges, we can give you an education. But he says, we can't give you the anointing. God is the only one that gives the anointing. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. God wants to give his anointing out. But he's not going to give his anointing just to anybody. That's not going to happen. You and I must create a clean heart. Allow him to create a clean heart in us so that things won't be misconstrued, so people won't get the big head, so that the glory will go to God. That's what's happening, folks. And I'll tell you something. I am so, so glad that I am part of something that is that on the most part in my opinion sees that and so when this woman came in again she she brought forth the spirit of prophecy and and she mentioned something out of the book of Isaiah chapter number 62 that um, I won't read for you but the bottom line is it's talking about putting us in a place where it can be seen 
And there's no question in my mind that has happened. Uh, uh, Brother, um, J uh, Brother Fitzner mentioned the fact of, of having some things in this service tonight that we just don't want to put out on the Internet. And, um, and I appreciate that caution because there are things that are happening that we have to be careful about. One of them, you, you've heard um, the story, maybe some of you have heard some of the story, about a man named um, Art Wilson. He's a pastor out of Detroit, Michigan. And um, he has had a, just a tremendous tremendous door that has opened for him. Let me just tell you a little bit of the story, and then maybe you can rejoice. Uh, the Acts 2.38 experience that ushered in a mighty move of God and opened the door of spiritual awakening, awakening is still happening today. God is manifesting himself to the general assembly at the United Nations. Yeah, the one where Obama is going to be speaking tomorrow, that's the one I'm talking about. We are excited to see what is unfolding at one of the most secure and exclusive operations in the world. Now, I feel at liberty to read this because this was in a magazine that went out all over the country, so I don't feel like this is going to be in any violation. Um, this is what uh, Brother Art Wilson said. He is the pastor of the International Church in Metro Detroit. Now, Detroit is a long way from New York. But this is where this man is. It all began in 2013 when Maria, and that's not her real name. This is a made-up name. When this woman, you know, a secretary to the UN Secretary General had to leave her position at the United Nations due to a terminal illness. She was on medical leave. And she visited her sister who just happens to be an apostolic believer. And that she had, and, then, and it was the sister that attended the church where Brother Art Wilson was. That's how the connection came. And so this lady who had a terminal illness, um, uh, you know, visited her sister who is an apostolic believer that attends the church there and went to church seeking more of Jesus. And during her visit, God miraculously healed her of her, will, of her Ill illness. But that's not all. God filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and she was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Oh, I'm telling you, God is opening up doors. Oh, hallelujah. And so there's a reason why things are happening, praise God. Now, after she returned home, now again, she wasn't from Detroit. She went back home. Word spread about her astonishing miracle of healing, and many global officials wanted to hear more. And so she called Brother Wilson, whom she regards as her pastor, and act, asked for his help in trying to better handle the questions. And after praying about the situation, this brother felt that he should go to the UN to verify that she had been completely cured of her illness and to explain how the healing power of Jesus was at work. Now, you get the scenario here? And they had prepared for a meeting with x-rays and medical documentations. He talked about what Brother Bernard said Friday night, documented miracles, miracles that cannot be denied in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you, this is where God is taking the apostolic movement. Come on, I'm telling you, folks, he's opening the doors. That's why you and I must believe that by the laying on of hands. Come on, the Bible says these signs shall follow them that believe. Not just the ministry, but anyone who will take the upper hand and say, I'm going to lay hands on somebody and believe God. Now, come on, this is for you. This is for me. This is what God wants to do, praise God. And so they prepared this meeting. And Brother Wilson had no idea how many people would be there. He thought maybe four or five people would come. But when he got there, he saw that there were over 100 ambassadors that were in the meeting, delegates. I'm talking about top officials in the world today. Praise God. And so these workers were there at the UN chapel where this meeting was scheduled. And so every guest that attended the, the service was given a Bible and a book containing salvation information. Go ye therefore into all the world, 
preaching the gospel to every creature. I'm telling you, folks, this is being fulfilled right before our eyes. Praise God. And so this powerful testimony of healing and her new birth experience. Let's not forget, folks, healing doesn't save people. And I'm all for healing. I believe that God used it, and he wants us to use it. But we that just opens the door where we can testify that there is a salvation message that Jesus himself brought forth. The apostles preached, and it's still alive and well on this earth in the name of Jesus. Can you say amen? Come on, I'm telling you, this is an exciting time to be living for God. Oh, hallelujah. One of the most exciting things that happened on the day of Pentecost is that prophecy was fulfilled, whosoever will. That's what's happening in the world that you and I. And so because of such interest that this brother Wilson decided to set up monthly evangelistic services and weekly meetings to teach Bible studies right there in the U.N., and this man, I, I, I've got to move on, but this man has received a clearance, a security clearance that only the top officials in that place get. Now, you can say what you want to about all of this, but folks, that is only God opening the door. Now, listen to me. I don't know how long this is going to go on. And there were things that he mentioned in the general board that I'm just not at liberty to, 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 to put out on the airs because of, of very touchy situations. He talks about an, an official right now who has been baptized in Jesus' name, received the Holy Ghost, and has gone back into their country, a Muslim country. And there are people that are seeking their lives right now. I'm telling you, people are going to put themselves in harm's way. But I believe the protecting hand is upon them now. I don't know how long this will go on. But I do know that God has positioned our organization right now to reach more people, to reach into more nations. The United Pentecostal Church right now is in 212 nations in this world. There's only 25 left. I believe by the end of the year, we can be in every nation in this world. I believe that is the will of God. Come on, you're part of something that is huge. You're part of something that is big. Come on, I believe God wants to help us. Oh. And so for 40 weeks, this has been going on over over 40 meetings they've had. Let me put it that way. And over 20 people have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, been baptized in Jesus' name. Nine notable documented healings have taken place right in the U.N. I'm telling you, folks, God is witnessing this thing to whosoever will. That's what's happening right now while you and I sit in this place right now. One of the things that happened with, with, with Pastor Wilson is that he was asked to address the General Assembly. There was only like 12 people in the entire world that they gave this privilege to. 12 people in this entire world they gave this privilege to. And so religious leaders from all over the world convened, and 12 people were picked, and he was one of them. And he gave up his opportunity so that Brother Lee Stone King could come and address. And that was unheard of. He didn't even know if they'd let him do that. But because of the influence that God has had through this man, they allowed it to happen. And many of you heard the, the testimony of, of Brother Stone King, how he was healed and how he uh, finished it up by giving them Acts 2.38. I believe that is the will of God. But what I didn't realize is that every five minutes, right now, every five minutes, Brother Wilson said this, 250 people every five minutes are viewing that video online in Jesus' name. God is reaching into all of this world. That's what he's doing. I'm telling you, folks, we are living in the most exciting times that we could be alive right now. God is doing it. He's doing it. Oh, hallelujah. 
And so I could say much, much more again about this, but I'm being very, very careful, folks. I don't want to. I don't want to mess anything up. God is using people like Brother Will. Brother Wilson is just somebody that got saved off the streets, started a church in Detroit, Michigan, and all of a sudden, after years of doing that, God leads somebody influential into His church. They pray for the woman; she gets healed, and the rest is just powerful in Jesus' name. Now, I believe God wants to do that for many, many many people in this hour we're living in right now because I believe that we do have a little bit of time yet. I don't know how much, but we got a little bit of time right now, and I believe God wants to give us as, as many opportunities as we will take in Jesus' name. Now, Brother Bernard talked, and I want to just finish up with this because I didn't plan on being very long tonight, and there's a lot of things I could say tonight. I really could, but Brother, you did a great job at, at, at the beginning, and I appreciate all that you said, but I want to leave you with this. You know, you can go online if you, if you want to, and I would certainly encourage you to do that. I think it's upci.com, and you can go into the, I don't know when they'll have it in the archives, but all of these messages will be in the archives. I wish all of you could have been in these services. We had church here Friday night, didn't we, brother? I mean to tell you, we had church here Friday night. I mean to tell you, we were like we were just there, brother. We weren't looking for you. We were looking for Jesus because Jesus was here while you were there. Praise God in the name name of Jesus and we had church oh hallelujah I'm telling you this is what it is it's exciting what God is doing praise God and so those messages are online and please do be partakers of them praise God I mean uh, uh, Tuesday night we went from E to Z actually from Z to E you know those were the two preachers you know and I mean to tell you what beautiful messages. I know Tuesday and, or, or Wednesday and Thursday night, they were, in my opinion, they were good preaching. I, we, we just had a good time there Wednesday night. But the bottom line, there was vision being cast. Who's going to be the next one? Who's going to be the next one that's going to raise up a church in a place, praise God, where there was no church? And we heard tremendous testimonies of people, ordinary people, just like you and I, that heard the calling of God, went somewhere and began a work for the Lord, and God is adding to the church daily they that will be saved. I'm telling you, folks, this is all biblical. This is all right out of the book of Acts. Praise God. But as I caution us, you know, in the book of Acts, they met resistance too. And so we must expect that, praise God. I wish all of you could have been in that discipleship class this afternoon. That was a will of God, praise God. Building and battling. Don't ever forget that, Jeannie. That's where you're at. Building and battling. Let's not forget, praise God, that we got to finish this. And that if we're going to go into the battle, there's going to be casualties. And sometimes we're going to get wounded. And we need to know how to get healed. And we know how to get to heal, how to get healed. His name is Jesus. Come on, don't let somebody, you know, that said something to you that hurt your little feelings. Come on, why don't you raise those hands and get over it in the name of Jesus. Come on, ask God to heal your mind. Ask God to take charge in the name of Jesus. Come on, folks, it's not time to have a vendetta. It's not time to hold a grudge. It's not time to get mean. It's time to lift up our hands to the Lord and let him heal our hearts and our minds in the name of Jesus. That's what he wants to do. That's what he is doing. Oh. And so God is doing that. And so I would encourage you to go online and listen to those messages because they were very, very powerful and they were very visionary. I mean to tell you, God is, 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 is showing us and telling us very, very, very specifically what to do. Amen. And a lot of it has to do with right now, not next month, not next year, but do it now. $3.2 million was raised Thursday night for, home, for, for foreign missions, praise God. We've only got six of our missionaries right now that are on, that are on deputation, and I hope that'll end by the, fir by the first of the year, praise God. And then what we can do is we can appoint more, and we can appoint more. This church, praise God, in the midst of that, we pledge $1,500 towards that cause. Come on, Carla, you told me to do it. I'm just kidding you. I'm just kidding you. 
Praise God. Praise God. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I, and I mean that in a very, very spiritual way. Praise God. This church is a good giving church. You folks have got the vision of foreign missions. We are the top in this district. And I say, I don't, that's not bragging. That's just where we're at right now. Praise God. This church gives, you know, a lot to missions. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep on doing that. Because this gospel needs to go out. And that's one of the best places we can put our money. In Jesus' name. But Brother Bernard spoke about many things, and he talked about him. And I, and I remember him ta talking about this, that back in 2007, and this is before he became the general superintendent, and this is when I, um, um, right after I got on the board, and I remember him talking about this, how that he was sitting at his table, and he had what, what really appears to be a stroke. And I mean, the left, right side or whatever, one side of his face went numb, and his arm was get very sporadic, and just all, all of it was there. And he talked about the fact that how his wife went over and, and began to um, call 911, which any of us would have done too if we were in a situation. But he talked about how God led him just to, during that moment to put his hand on his head and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Come on, the Bible says you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Come on, he just took advantage of that with his own initiative. And to make a long story short, he went to the hospital and the diagnosis was, yeah, you probably had, or you, you had that, but you're completely healed. Now that's what God wants to do, my friend. He wants to do that. Two years later, praise God, that man became our general superintendent. So you see that there's already forces at work sometimes that wants to derail some of the things that God is doing. Amen. And please don't ever misunderstand me. Brother, Brother um, Bernard is a very, very humble man. I mean, I have been working with him now and, and alongside of him in other factors with many things. This past week, I had to work with him about a man or out here and his wisdom and his humility. He was raised in Korea, and I don't think that was an accident. He doesn't have a whole lot of an American mentality. He has an oriental. You can tell. And he's very humble and very, very, I mean, he comes across that way. And believe me, I've watched him in the boardroom and saw that spirit come across, and it just melted all of the, uh, all of the, all of the things that could have happened. And so I'm, I'm, I'm I, and again, I'm not lifting him up. I'm lifting up the God that is in him, using him. But Friday night, he preached, and, and, and he related to something here that I just want to leave you with, praise God. You must understand, there were two teams when Israel became split. You know, the nation became divided. And it's sad reality, folks. That's one of the things the devil is, not, is, is, is very relentless towards. He wants to divide your family. I'm telling you that right now, husbands and wife. He wants to divide you. He wants to get you jealous. He wants to get you in competition with one another. He wants to split this church. He wants to do that. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. That's exactly what the devil would want to do in this hour. And he tries to do that all the time. He'll get you sideways with your brother or with me. Something that was said that wasn't even intended for that will get somebody angry and they'll maul on that for a week or two. And pretty soon, my goodness, I wouldn't want to give him a gun. And again, I'm just telling you, that's how we human beings are. That's why we can't wait until tomorrow to pray. we got to do it right now. Those of you that are looking for some things, you've got to do it now. And so the, the title of, or basically the title of his message was, It's Time to Preach. And I'm going to tell you something, my friends. It is. And if you think about preaching, it doesn't mean just a five-fold ministry. It's talking about proclaiming. Listen to the word of God, and then I'll... I'll, I'll Try to unhook the plow here. The scripture says in Ezekiel chapter 3, Ezekiel chapter 3, and the brother that preached before him used Jeremiah chapter 29, and I don't believe that was any, any um, um, you know, any mystery, that type of thing, because you had teams. You had Daniel and Ezekiel. You had Isaiah and, um, um, and Jeremiah. They were prophets. People that God used even during some of the most precious times. And so the Bible says there in three and, uh, Ezekiel 3 and 10, it says, Moreover, he said unto me, It's a son of man, all my words. 
I'm talking to somebody right now that you've kept back a little bit from somebody that God had you to testify about. And I'm asking you to reconsider that. Now, I believe that God through the Spirit is helping us to do it in love. Getting that arrogance and that, you know, you better do it or else attitude out of us and doing it in love. And I'm going to tell you right now, Saint of God, if you will begin to practice this, God will open more and more and more doors for you to testify all my words. He said that I shall speak unto thee. First of all, receive. It's a principle, folks. You can't give what you don't have. Such as we have, give we to thee. Remember the old famous saying in the third chapter of Acts? Silver and gold. <laughs> we're broke. <laughs> but such as we have, we're going to give you. In the name of Jesus, get up. That's what I'm talking about. And so we can't give it if we don't have it. And so we must get into a position every day where we can receive the things of God. Now, Brother Bernard didn't preach this, but I feel this tonight. There's somebody in here right now that that's where God's got you. He's got you in a church where it is an absolute atmosphere right now where you can receive the things of God. That is not an accident, folks. That is a mandate from God. And I'm not lifting our church up above any other churches, folks, but I will tell you this. We are mission-minded and we are prayer-minded in this church. You could feel that when you went into that prayer room tonight. We weren't praying for headaches, folks. We weren't praying for hangnails. I'm telling you, God was using this church again and again and again in that dimension. That's what God is doing in this church right now. That's what he's doing. And he's positioning people, praise God, that can come. Amen. We had a couple here this morning that moved all the way back from Las Vegas, went back and got their stuff. They were here last week. They like what they felt. They like what they heard. They were back again today. I'm telling you, folks, God is doing that. But you want to know something? I'm going to give them all the words of God. I'm not just going to give them all the stuff that they want to hear. And I'll do it in kindness, and we'll do it as a process. But this is what God is doing. And so all my words, receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. Receive it. Now that we got it, look at somebody and say, I got it. The Bible says, go. Get thee to them of captivity. And we got a whole county full of people like that. And unto the children of thy people and speak unto them and tell them. Tell them. It says, thus saith the Lord God. And here it is, my friend. Whether they hear it or whether they don't. God's not asking us to judge that. He's just saying you and I need to get into a position where boldly, frankly, specifically, we will tell people what the word of God says. And I'm going to tell you something. That was one of the central messages that Brother David Bernard preached Friday night. It's time to preach. And I'm telling you, folks, this is what's happening. People all over this world are witnessing. A sister just said, come to church with me. The God that I serve can heal. And obviously they had to come. But they came and God healed her of a terminal illness. And a door has been open at the UN. For how long, I don't know, but I know it's open right now. And I believe into all of these nations, maybe the 25 that are left, God is taking a witness back. He doesn't have to just use us, folks. We're not the exclusive brand on this. I'm glad that I'm a minister of the United Pentecostal Church International. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not disrespectful. But, folks, the, the UPC didn't save me. Jesus did. But I'm glad there is organization that can come together and say, come on, we can do something better together than we can do alone. We can get some more things going if we get a group to say, yeah, let's do it in Jesus' name. Now, I believe that that's not only for us in America and the nations of the world, but that's a message for this church 
right here. That together we can see God move in this county and in this state and in this region better than ever before. But like I said before, the devil isn't going to like it. He never does. And so you and I must, ex must accept the fact that there is going to be opposition. But I believe that God can help us to rise above that opposition, get over things quickly, and get ourselves focused for the kingdom of God. Because believe me, both of us, when we were down there in Nashville, Tennessee, you could feel a lot of that going around this entire organization. And I'm not saying the organization is perfect. That would be absolutely not the truth. But I believe that there's a vast majority of this organization that really want to see the movement of God go forth in Jesus' name. And you and I have, a, have, have the privilege to be a part of this in Jesus' name. Let's keep believing. Let's keep singing. He's so amazing. There's nobody like the Jesus you and I know. There's nobody like him. And I'm going to tell you something. We need to let this world know every opportunity that we have in Jesus' name. Would you stand with me tonight? Thank you, Brother Fitzner, for your casting your vision. Thank you, folks, for hanging around tonight and allowing the Lord to speak to your heart. Would you lift your hands right now, and let's just begin to pray. Come on, let's take a few minutes, and let's let God just kind of let this absorb into our minds. Come on, I believe this is important. I believe what God is doing is so, so m much more important than what we could come up with. Come on, let God begin to use you. Believe God for a testimony that will reach out into your neighborhood, into your job area, in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Come on. Let's let God do something. Let's let God do something. Come on. Brother Stone King has always said, God's going to use somebody. It might as well be me and it might as well be you. I believe that here tonight in this group right here. God wants to use us in Jesus' name. Let that vision get a hold of us, God. Help us, Lord Jesus, to receive it with meekness. Help us us, Lord God, to get a hold of this. And I pray a spirit of boldness. I pray a spirit, Lord God, of boldness that will come upon each and every one in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. Come on. We've tapped into something right now. Let's go on for another 30 seconds. Come on. Let's just get into the water right now in the name of Jesus. That's it. That's it. God is doing something miraculous. Oh, hallelujah. Who cares about, you know, like what people say? Come on. We love them. We want to see them saved. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter who's opposing it. They can't oppose God. God's going to have his work done. He's going to do it in Jesus' name. That's it. That's it. In the name of Jesus, go into the Spanish in this community. Go into the ethnic groups, Lord God. Reach out, Lord God. Help them. Oh, in the name of Jesus, I pray and I loose every hungry, every soul that is hungry right now. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, that blindness is lifted in this area right now in the name of Jesus that spontaneous praise is going forth that will heal and deliver in the name of Jesus that the doctrines of Christ are easily seen anybody can get the Holy Ghost if they'll repent in the name of Jesus that's it God that's it that's it let that just go into this area right now in the name of Jesus let it flood let it come against every opposition in the name of Jesus I claim it this is our day this is the day to preach. This is the day to proclaim. Let that fall upon each and every one now in the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, God. I thank you for it. Yes, you are doing it, God. You are the one. You're the author and the finisher in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Go ahead and lay hands on the person next to you right now. Go ahead, do that. Come on, lay your hands on them and say in Jesus' name, use them, God. Use them. Give them boldness. Give them them boldness right now in the name of Jesus these teenagers God give them boldness in the name of Jesus let them Lord God feel your heart oh yes Jesus that's right that's right let them reach out Lord God like never before in the name of Jesus that's it folks come on I believe God is doing this I believe God is doing this right now as we speak I believe his anointing come on remember we can educate but only God can give the anointing I believe the anointing is in this place right now in the name of Jesus, 
Oh, hallelujah. You say what anointing? The anointing to break every yoke. The anointing to break every yoke. Every yoke, every yoke. Come on. I'm telling you, God can do it. He can do it. It doesn't matter what the opposition is. It doesn't matter how much or how little. In the name of Jesus, that's it. That's it. That's it. Come on. The anointing is falling in this place. Come on. God is doing something great if we'll let him in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bokata hasha. Bokata hasha. Bokata hasha, yala mo riba bo shanda, yale mo mo nu yale bo bakahasa. Yes, in the name of Jesus, the anointing that breaks every yoke. Come on, I believe God is giving His anointing out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing in this hour. Thank you that we can see, that we can hear. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God, what the Spirit is saying unto the church and what he's saying and showing to the church. Oh, yes, Lord God, your wisdom and understanding in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, God is replacing this with this. The sword of the Spirit, which is his word, in Jesus' name. And so you have the weapons. In fact, Lord God, right now, I pray in Jesus' name, every one of the weapons. I'm talking the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, not loving our lives unto death, the word of God, the name of Jesus, Prayer and praise, the Holy Ghost, and the angels of the Lord. Let them go forth into these people's lives, having our loins girt about with the truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith whereby we can quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is your word, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watchings thereunto with all saints. And Lord God, I pray that right now in in every person here in Jesus name Lord God let the gifts of the spirit let the fruit of the spirit begin to abound in their lives and I pray that right now in the name of Jesus can you say amen let's one more time let's thank God for what Praise you, God. Brother, is this being recorded? Okay, we just, okay, that's okay. Um, but I, I don't think we said anything here that would hurt anybody. Yeah. I, uh, I, I didn't say, I mean, I didn't give any names, <laughs> any addresses, anything like that. <laughs> Praise God. No, and, I, and, and that's why I was very careful about this report here, is I, I read a lot of it out of a magazine that's been published all over the country, so he, got, he gave him the okay. So I think we're okay, Jesus' name. You might have said a few things, though, brother. I have just, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But uh, God bless you, folks. Let's be excited about what the Lord is doing. Amen. Amen. And so the Lord give you, give you peace and understanding. And don't forget our Bible study on Wednesday night, of course. Prayer meeting Tuesday night, I believe they're still having that. And so all kinds of good, good exciting things that are going on in an apostolic church. Praise God. The Lord bless you. What was that? Yeah. I think I made all the announcements, T-shirts. If you need a T-shirt, man, we got them. So um, uh, make your orders. God bless you, folks. Appreciate you. In Jesus' name.